Hi everyone, my name is Rika. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel again. Today I want to talk about things that you must do upon arriving to Canada in order to make your transition that much smoother and just some things that kind of are mandatory. <laughs> so if you are interested in hearing about this type of thing, feel free to stick around. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend and encourage them to make this move because it is one that I'm sure they won't regret. Alright, so upon arriving, you literally have to get your study or your work permit or a combination of both. Um, you have to get that process started right away. Those are issued at the border. When I just started this process, I really thought the visa was all I needed and we just slipped through and that's fine. Um, apparently, no. <laughs> if your program has a internship like mine did, you will need a work permit in order to complete that internship or if you don't have an internship attached to your program but you do want to work while you are going to school here you will also need to apply for a work permit a work permit i don't think that they will give you that one with your initial processing but um the study permit is something that you will get and you can apply for your work permit i believe at service canada sometime after so then you also want to apply for your social insurance number this is a number that permits you to work. This is attached to almost everything that you do to some banks ask for it when you're opening. Well, the banks that I bank with have asked me for it when I was opening my account. They use um, this information to see what products and services that you are eligible for. Uh, so it's something that you definitely want to start out right away. It also helps with schooling because for tax purposes, you need to enter your social insurance number into the school's database. I would want to secure a place to live as soon as possible. Uh, I know that not in every circumstance you are able to do that before your actual arrival. So what persons do who are unable to secure it from their home country is they will come, um, do an Airbnb for a while. While they're doing the Airbnb, go to places and see what it's like, see what they can get for their money, see what's actually close to school, see what they're comfortable with, you know, get a vibe from the landlord. That is very different when you do have a cold interaction over the internet where it's just like, money, you send me pictures. That doesn't sound like an exchange for a place. Where <laughs> you get pictures of the place and you send the person money, your landlord, and um, you are able to secure that place. I wouldn't advise anyone to just send money through for some pictures that you have seen. When I was on Kijiji looking for a place to stay while I was back in my home country of Jamaica, a person had, I had reached out to a place that I thought looked fairly decent and whatever, and they sent me a lease and he was saying he was this top businessman and he didn't really need the money, so he was just renting his apartment in downtown Toronto. So, um, just so that it's not empty while he's away on travel, which he usually is. I, I, don't, I don't know how I quite felt about that, so I opted not to continue with that conversation and just kind of left it there. So those are some things that you need to be aware of. If it's too good to be true, quite likely it, it's just not true. Oh, so get your driving record from your home country if possible. Um, if the driving system here, I, I guess I can possibly compare it to Jamaica or I can just explain it. The driving system here, you have your G1, which is like your learner's license and you attain that by doing a theory-based test. You have your G2, which I'm not entirely sure everything. <laughs> I'll probably have a link to what all of them mean and all that stuff. But I know G1 is learning that if you have enough driving experience from your previous country, you can go up to your G. You can just go straight up to your G, which is like the big license, I guess. Um, if you fail the G, you go back to G1 and then you have to do over your G test. So those are some things to keep in mind. And if you can skip something and skip paying, you know, additional money, I'm not sure of a lot of persons who would opt not to do that. So um, I would want to open an account as well as like really soon. I did that, I believe in my first week of being here. If you are coming here, you're probably going to have like a lot of money because you do need a lot of money to start things up. And if it's your first time here, you quite likely wouldn't have an account before. Most persons don't walk around with money just like that. So they try to have some type of account to put it in. With for, to open your account, what you do need is your, I think your work or your study permit as well as your social insurance number some banks will ask for that as I mentioned earlier so you want to have those on hand I believe that they do ask for ID as well so whenever you're going to government agencies and whatever just walk with everything your bird paper everything it just just walk with everything because you don't know what they will ask you for sometimes to do governmental services take a little while because you know there's just a crowd from time to time so you don't want to go there and not have all the documents that they will need similarly to when you're applying for your social insurance number that's not given to you initially um during your processing i did that before school 
So I did that before school really started to heat up because I realized that after school really started to heat up, I really wouldn't have had the time to actually go do it. So I would do that as soon as possible and I believe they need like my passport and stuff like that. So as I mentioned, just walk with everything. If you didn't register for classes in your home country, um, you might want to register for them as soon as you land. I don't know if some schools do course by course registration. I know for my undergraduate studies, that's what they did where you just register for your different courses and they fall wherever they fall on the timetable. For here, I just registered for a block. So in block A or block B or I don't know, set one, set two, whatever they choose to name them, all the all the all of the classes associated with that block or that section, those are just all the classes that you will be attending. So if you're not like a super morning person and you realize that a lot of these classes in block A or section A have um, a lot of morning classes, you can opt for the next best thing. Uh, but you definitely want to register as quickly as possible. Even though you've paid your money, I think there probably would be some type of like, you need for just register free classes. Also sign up for the classes that you need, especially before starting to actually attend them because People have attending classes that they're not registered for and it's beyond me but it happens. Get a phone. <laughs> when you arrive at the airport, there are like, I feel like little mini shops or whatever that have a SIM card that they're selling, phones that they're selling. If you are new, you might not necessarily be able to get a phone on a plan, just, you know, you need like government ID for that type of thing, etc. and credit and all that stuff. So I had an unlocked phone and I just used my unlocked phone for a while and I just bought a SIM card. I would avoid getting a phone on a plan right away, even if you could, because you're not sure about the expenses that you'll be incurring. And when you just kind of compare it, like my phone bill now is like a hundred and something dollars compared to my phone bill when I just came here, which is about 50 something dollars. So you know what I mean? Like you don't know, it sounds like just 50 something dollars or 60 dollars, but that can be groceries one week or whatever. You're not working. You don't want to get yourself in a lot of expenses that are almost completely unnecessary. So I would hold off on getting a phone if I don't need to get one and just opt for a SIM card. I'm not telling anybody to get a flip phone, which is probably like super inexpensive because if you need it for, you know, academic purposes or whatever, or just, you know, regular social life, that's probably not the most effective thing to have. But um, I would get that as soon as possible when you're calling around, especially initially to your Airbnb the airbnbs are the places that you'd want to rent after your airbnb you will need a phone a lot of persons are kind of iffy to answer international numbers so even if you're roaming they might be like eh. i mean i think for reasons that we all probably can assume why persons may not want to answer numbers that are not necessarily from their region so yeah get get a phone i would recommend doing this as soon as possible um you know if your first semester if you can in your second semester if you can is to do your self pip or your i i can't pronounce the other one <laughs> i'll put both of them on the screen is to do either of them um really quickly you don't necessarily need to be here working for an entire year before you apply for permanent residence after you finish school so if you want the points from finishing school to go towards your permanent residence you don't need to be working a whole year, especially if you have work experience from your home country. It's just the amount of points that the skills that you have and the experience and the schooling that you have give you relative to the pool that they're pulling right now. So if the pool that they're pulling right now has really low scores, or if you are just that good of a candidate because of your previous experience, you really don't need to sit around um, a whole year afterwards to do it. So I would do it as soon as possible and start looking into getting permanent residence almost immediately after going to school you also can do it before you even come here i think you can do it you can do the i whatever one i'll put again you can do that one from jamaica i think self-up is only available in selected regions and i don't believe jamaica is one of them i would also just go ahead and become a part of certain groups and societies that would help to give you a good I don't know, mentor program. Oh, I have a friend who she had joined the Kiwanis Club and I think that, that was very rewarding for her and she was a part of it in Jamaica. So if you are interested and those that's in your home country, you can come and be a part of the Toronto chapter, the Saga chapter, I possibly Ottawa chapter. I, I don't I honestly don't know I'm not a part of it. And I'm not necessarily recommending this because I have personal experience. I'm just giving an example of a society that you can join. I believe there's also the Jamaica Canada Association. I was recently introduced to that one so you can also reach out to them and see the information that they have to offer and i don't think they necessarily exclusively serve jamaicans because if you are from a caribbean background we kind of why won't this let me be great 
you kind of have um, like a similar heritage and just you know similar culture and all that type of thing so you can also join I believe there's a registration fee I'll probably link both of those suggested uh, associations below just so that you can have a quick click to see where you would like to stay as a or where you'd like to be a part of an association of if you're applying for a part-time job I would I would start doing that really quickly because I know, I know, I know, jobs, jobs, and more jobs. That's how it looks from the outside looking in when you want to move to Canada. However, jobs kind of take a while, and it's if you are looking for something specific. Uh, for persons who think they're going to have their first semester and just come and kind of work to get their second semester, I think probably if you have like no bills at all and you're working the full 20 hours per week off campus at minimum wage or better, maybe. I, I honestly haven't really done the math. So that's something that you could look into. I don't know. It's I guess it's possible. I'm I re, I'm really not sure. And I'm not necessarily recommending anybody to do that. Uh, but if you want to find a job that's something you want to come, you know, ha all hands on deck, applying everything. I know a lot of persons who probably do that. They work. I don't know. Usually fast food, retail, that type of thing that has a flexible shifts and I can accommodate your schedule. Not that many uh, corporate jobs will. Be able to necessarily accommodate that because if you're if you have to attend meetings at certain points it's just it gets a lot more complicated you, you just have to go through it and sift through again the per, the places that I would always recommend when looking for jobs and they have served me well not necessarily for those types of jobs but they have served me well for my car for when I was looking for jobs that were in my more professional field definitely indie definitely LinkedIn I can safely say or I feel I can safely say I don't necessarily see as many jobs now as I, I have in the past unfortunately and that's just kind of because of everything that's happening but as soon as things pick up i'm almost sure that they'll be back on track and they'll be you know advertising jobs again connect with your international student advisors in my previous video i mentioned that Humber's the, well at least the student advisor that was attached to me did a really really good job and I was just very comfortable talking to her she was just such a sweetheart I really enjoyed you know speaking to her we didn't get to meet up we had planned to meet up but we didn't get to meet up because I'm telling you school gets so crazy like you would think that you are able to find time to say oh let me grab a coffee or a muffin with you like sometimes not even have time to scratch my head like it gets so crazy so we didn't necessarily get to Meet up unfortunately, but the resources are available. As I mentioned, they have immigration advisors that can help you with your transition from leaving school to just, you know, being a part of the workforce or, you know, whatever else. Reach out to them. They have the resources. Possibly these resources, possibly these resources are available at other schools, but I can only speak to the school that I did attend and um, I think it was pretty good. Yeah, those are things that I would do immediately upon arriving to Canada just so that you are able to make your transition that much smoother. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment in the comment section. I really appreciate them. I appreciate chatting with people and just giving, you know, some type of advice that would help to have their stay here be that much more comfortable, have their transition just be that much better and, you know, something to do while we're in quarantine. So, <laughs> so thank you for watching.